My name is Andrew Morris. I'm a retired electronics engineer, and uh, my gadget this time is a, uh, <coughs> a dimmable LED desk lamp. I recently discovered how cheap these high brightness uh, white LEDs have become and wanted to make a uh, dimmable desk lamp. Uh, I designed an electronic uh, LED control circuit that's uh, simple and energy efficient and installed it in a fluorescent lamp that I had bought at a uh, uh, flea market years ago. Uh, at full power, it uses about five watts of power. It's dimmable from what I call a night light level to a retina burner level. Uh, but seriously, do not look directly into the LEDs at full brightness because it might damage your vision. Uh, there's very little here uh, to demonstrate, uh, but this uh, project is not really about the lamp itself because your lamp is going to be totally different. It's really about the circuit that uh, controls the, uh, the uh, LEDs. Uh, the LEDs are uh, wired in series strings like uh, Christmas tree lights. Uh, <clears throat> I recommend a maximum of uh, uh, 36 LEDs per string in order to have good uh, uh, power supply headroom. Uh, but you can parallel the strings to get a, a, a large, uh, to power a large array of LEDs. Uh, this lamp has two strings in it for a total of 32 LEDs. The one LED uh, here you can see uh, is being used as a voltage reference for the current regulator and it goes all the way, it goes completely out when you turn it all the way down. Uh, if you don't like that you would have to replace that LED and its complement in the other string with Zener diodes which would use the same amount of power uh, but would not produce any light. Uh, the only real uh, uh, penalty you pay for the circuit's simplicity is that the circuit is not isolated from the power line. That means that, that all the components have to be enclosed or insulated in some way to prevent electric shock. But if you do that, the circuit is as uh, safe as any other lamp or appliance in your house. Uh, what I have here is a breadboard of the same basic circuit used in the lamp, except uh, this version forces the secondary string of LEDs to track the primary string. This is a, a situation where if you have to have more than, uh, what, 126 volts worth of LEDs, but uh, you, can't, you can't match the strings. Uh, uh, like in this lamp, the two strings are matched, but if they're not matched, uh, then you have to uh, uh, use add a transistor to force the, the two to track each other. And, and that's about it. Now I can unhook it. If I unhook the, uh, the uh, secondary uh, string, you can see, you see the primary string gets a little... Uh, little brighter when I do that because of the uh, the ripple on the on the capacitor C1 goes down causing the average voltage to go up because uh, the circuit regulates the peak voltage. I would not dare touch a circuit like a hot circuit like this without an isolation transformer because I got, might get the snot knocked out of me. But uh, uh, seriously if you <clears throat> do not work on a circuit like this, if you're not very familiar with line-powered circuits uh, and their safety issues, first of all, you need a switch so you can turn it off if something happens, and you need an isolation transformer. Uh, <clears throat> uh, besides the safety issue, if you hook an oscilloscope up to this circuit without an isolation transformer, you'll see fireworks. So because of that, 
I, rec I strongly advise you to buy an isolation transformer, allied electronic cells, one similar to this, for about uh, $21, and I included it in the parts list for your convenience. Thank you very much for your interest.